Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be talking about all things applique in embroidery. And there's a lot of different ways that you can approach applique designs. Like when you look at the quilt in the back with the monsters in them, those are pre-made designs that already have the applique stops in there. There is something that Husqvarna Viking and my Sonet Embroidery and all of our embroidery software that we've had in the past do that's very different from any the way anybody else does it. If you buy a pre-purchased design that's an applique from somebody else, oftentimes you will find that they have color stops. Um, they've changed the color for the first part of it. And then the second, col second part where it goes around and does a double stitch is a different color. And then the third stop is a different color still. And so when you save those designs, export them, and if you have color start on, what that does is it combines all of them and stops your design from stopping where you need to. Our so uh, my Sonet embroidery software and all of our previous software, and even the way our appliques are made in the machine, have the ability to stop when it's the right time. So any applique that's usually done that's made in our software will have one outline that'll go around to show you where to lay the fabric. Then there's a double stitch that will stitch the fabric in place. And after the double stitch happens, your machine will say there's a stop requested. And then it will wait for you to cut the fabric away. And then it will do the decorative stitch afterwards. So only designs that are made for our machines or in our software have that ability to have those stops as part of one color. Not, you'll find that, well, as you come up, we're going to talk about how that works. Now, I have lots of projects to share with you today, and we're going to start with a couple of simple ones, and I think you're going to enjoy them. But one of the things that I do different when I'm working with appliques is I tend not to stay with very uh, traditional quilting fabric. A lot of people, if they're appliqueing, will have applique only with the traditional cottons, where I use all kinds of fabrics. I'll use dress fabrics, I'll use velvets and silks. Now, each time you do something, you may, uh, using a different fabric, you may want to do something a little bit different, but they're really easy techniques that you can do to get some really nice looks to what you're doing. So the last one I did, this was a quilt that was done with some designs that are in the Ruby 90. And when you're looking at the, the trees, many of those trees have been done with dress fabrics, like dress velvets. What I was doing was looking for trees that were the same color, but different textures and fabrics. So a lot of times I'll head over to the dress um, department in a, a fabric store and look at those kinds of uh, fabrics. But when we're working with different projects, like I've made some projects and these were done directly in the machine. And, and we're going to cover how you can do this with your embroidery machine. This one's working with a faux leather. I've got another one. This is a vinyl that's meant for jackets. It's waterproof. And then on the back, I've got some uh, clear vinyl and I put a business card in there. So every time you play around with different fabrics, there are some different techniques that you might use. For example, if you're going to be using plastic and a satin stitch, if you're using a very thin plastic, the satin stitch uh, will likely just tear away at the edge of it and it's not going to hold. So whenever you're using plastic in an embroidery project, I always recommend getting a, a much thicker. Uh, I know the one that I got has got yellow printing on the back of it and just go around and you want something that's really got some body and that's going to hold up. If you go with a very thin plastic, that's going to perforate too easily and you're not going to be happy with the end result. So to start with, we've got this fun little project and it is uh, my family tree that I'm creating. So I have in my software the ability to create an applique, but the first thing I wanted to do was figure out how I was going to get the pictures of the people that I wanted to make on my family tree. So what I did is I printed them off on a fabric sheet. You can buy these fabric sheets in craft stores and a lot of your quilt stores will have fabric sheets. The one I'm using is electric quilt, but there's a lot of good ones out there. Just make sure that it says that they are color fast. So after you've printed your fabric on your sheet, usually what you do is you tear away a backing 
and then you wet it. So that sets the colors. Now, I to turn these into an applique, what I'm going to do is bring them onto my machine. And I'll do this right on my machine. Here's what some of the results look like when they're done. And I've kind of color coded them. I'll switch over here to this camera. I've color coded them so that maybe I'm going to have every part of the family. Um, this is um, our son Kevin's family. And so he's going to be turquoise. I might have another color for another part of the family, be yellow or orange or purple. And so that kind of will set up the family tree and make it a little easier to see who's part of the same family. Now, instead of putting the mother and father as two different pictures, what you can do is combine them on one and then make them an applique, which will save you a little bit of space if you've got a very busy family tree. But I want to show you how you can make appliques right in your machine. And many, many, many of our embroidery machines do have the ability to make applique right in our machine. So we're going to go right over there onto the designer Epic 2. And uh, we'll talk about that. The Ruby Niner, 90 has the ability to uh, create the appliques right on the machine, the Sapphire 85. And for those of you that don't, have the ability to do it right in your machine you can also do it in the software so we're going to kind of cover both ways so that you can really um, get a sense of how you can do it with your machine and i'm just gonna move that so you don't see the mess that's in the back there all right so and i'm gonna uh, we'll cover a lot of different ways of doing things so if this one doesn't apply to you don't worry we'll come back and we'll do more so with my designer Epic 2, the Sapphire 85, the, Ru the Diamond Royale has the ability to make appliques, a lot of different machines. And if you're curious, there is a comparison uh, chart that's available that you can go and check and see if your machine can do it. But wait until after the Facebook Live because you can check it out then. All right. So on my designer Epic 2, the ability to do applique, they've moved that down to the bottom. On the original, um, designer epic and uh, some other machines you'll find that over here and it usually looks like a flower so if i wanted to make a flat oh but wait a minute what about if we have the ability to put those images behind right so i can take my app and send a picture to my screen let me turn that on here i did this earlier today i'm going to turn the image on and now i have the picture of those people right on my screen. So when I go to make an applique, I'm going to choose a circle. I've opened up the applique screen and I'm going to go and choose a circle. Now, right now, it's not a particular design. It doesn't have any stitches attached to it. So if I touch the check mark and go out right now, there will be no stitches. Down on the bottom left-hand corner, our machines that have the ability to make applique right in the, the machine, you will see there's six different kinds of stitches. If you wanted a satin stitch, you could choose a small satin stitch or a wider one. You can choose an irregular satin stitch or a wider one. The wider ones are on the bottom or a candle wicking knot. So I've chosen a narrow satin line and I've made the design so that it's gonna fit that face well. And now when I touch the check mark, there is my, and I'll hide the picture so that you can see it. Wait a second here. I'll hide the picture so you can see what that looks like. I'll get out of here. There we go. So there is one applique design. And in any applique design, if you check the colors, you will see that it says applique one. That is a straight stitch that's going to go around to show you where to lay the fabric. Applique two is going to be the double stitch, and it's going to go around twice to make sure the edges of that are caught in your applique. And then the third one, that is the satin stitch or whatever decorative stitch that you've chosen. So if I go back in here and I turn my image back on that I sent for my app, now I can just touch my design and touch duplicate. And now I can move that applique shape to each of the faces and I know exactly where it's going to go. And it'll only take me a couple of seconds to do that. Now I'm going to come back over and see if there's any questions. 
to stop for a second here. So now the way that this works, when I did the faces here, I really didn't want to have, there was no stitching, right? It was just the outside border. So I wanted the fabric to be a little stiffer. So I layered two layers of um, off-white fabric. I put a, a layer behind it and I fused it with stick and fuse too so that it gave body to that fabric sheet. Cause you can see it's kind of a little bit floppy when you print them. So to be able to have a little bit more body to that, anytime I'm looking for more body, I'll usually fuse another layer to the back of it to get it to stay. Now, uh, it's just a fun idea. If you do have the software MySonet Embroidery Platinum, we obviously have photo stitch. So you could add these pictures and turn them into stitches, but not everybody wants to spend the time and not everybody, um, you know, it's not something that everybody's interested in. But pretty much everybody can print on fabric and really get some nice, nice images. So uh, I'll play this, put this down here like this and put the image next to it. So you can see this was the one printed and then that's what it ended up with being the applique. And then there's the other one I have over there. So uh, just an easy way of coming up with some fun uh, techniques. I'm going to go now just for a second, wait a second here, to my software. And for those of you that have an embroidery machine that you can't do applique right on the machine, then in our software, and this would be true of the my Sonet uh, box version of gold and also my Sonet platinum, you have frames and you can choose all these different shapes and make them whatever size you want them to be. And all you do is you go to the frames, you touch applique, and then you can make them whatever size you want them to be. And if you're looking for a specific size, you can go to view and get the length of the background. So you can kind of measure how long that's gonna be. I was looking for circles that were around two inches. So now I know that it might need to be a little bit smaller for that to be two inches and I can drag that. You can always look at the grid behind too if you want to. Now, if you like the idea of a family tree type of arrangement, the design that I used right here, this was a trunk that was a ribbon embroidery design and I laid fabric behind it to create my applique tree. And um, somebody asked a question about how did I get the image on the, on the, the machine? I'm gonna show you that in a moment. Just in case, I, I, if you haven't seen how that works, it's actually very, very cool. So, but if I go back into my software, if you like the idea, there are under super designs, a ton of different trees and appliques that are already ready. If you go down, scroll down to the bottom, there are a lot of these different super designs, which means you can make them in any size you want to. Now, over here on the left, there are three completely separate different types of trees. And then we have all these different kinds that we could set up. But let's pretend I'm gonna take this one right here and I'm gonna to touch apply. This one, if I wanted to, I could set up in the majestic hoop. And you know that majestic hoop is like 13 and three quarters by 14 and a quarter inches. And maybe if I wanted to go with a tree like that instead of circles, we have these applique shapes that are ready to go. I could choose one of the circles or I could choose a leaf like this. And then I can place those leaves wherever I want them. Or maybe I want to make a different shape of a leaf. That's where we can go to create. And I'm just going to show you a really quick way to create your own applique. I'm going to go to create and go to digitizing. And when I go there under quick create, we have 120 different shapes and many of them are perfect. I personally love this leaf shape here. I think this works really well. I'm gonna make it a satin border and an applique, but I'm gonna take away the fill. And then when I go to touch the word shape, now I have a leaf shape that I can move and change the size of it. And I'm gonna copy that and I'll move it into my other hoop so you can see what it looks like in here. All right. Oops, I guess I didn't. Let's duplicate it. Oh, I didn't copy it. 
let me come back there and touch duplicate or copy. There we go. Now it's there. I can see it in my design. And now when I come to the other one, I'll have it back in here and it's not showing up. That's a little blooper. We'll fix that. Anyway, so you get the idea of all the different shapes that you can do. So in the other, uh, when it comes to the question about how did we get that picture to our machine, what I did was I took a picture of the images that I had in my hoop. And what I did was I went to the My Sonet Monitor. These are all free apps. If you haven't been using them and you have a Wi-Fi compatible machine, this really does make a big difference. So I've, I've opened up the app in my phone and I'm going to take a picture. Wait a second here. I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to have it in there exactly the way that I plan on having it. All right. And then when I take a picture... It sees the corners, and if it doesn't see the corner, hold on, I'm just going to pull this up for you to see so that I'm not looking away from you too much. There we go. All right. So what it's seeing is that image and it's showing you the outside edge of and the inside edge of the hoop. And if it doesn't show you the exact image of the hoop, you're meant to change those corners, these red circles in the uh, corner. Then you touch the arrow and it'll show you what your image looks like. And the airplane at the bottom, that's the send button. When you touch this, it sends that image to the screen so that you can see it on your machine. Super easy, super nice to do. Uh, somebody asked a question about the Majestic Hoop requiring being split, splitting. When you are doing anything in the Majestic Hoop, you absolutely will need to split it. And if I change my hoop, and right now I've, I've come back to that screen, and I go to change hoop, I'm going to choose the Majestic Hoop. And we have a lot of machines that use the Majestic Hoop. You always should have it natural, not rotated when you're saving it. When you go to export this design, you'll have a choice of exporting. Do you want it to be done naturally? Or you could split it yourself if you want to. And what I, the way I would do this is I would split it so these hoops right here, these uh, branches right here are on one side. And then these branches on the other side will um, stitch out separately. So I always try and find the most logical way to split it. But the, you know, the, the way that you think through the process makes a big difference. Now, in the um, it right in our machines, if you do have the ability to make appliques in your machine, we have fonts that are built in. This is a font that's an applique font. And I'm making a quilt with all the different letters. And this was really kind of an amazing project because I actually saw a class where they were doing this in sewing. And many of them were not happy because it's not always easy to go around a curve in a satin stitch. But be, by being able to do this in embroidery, I was able to tell my machine that I wanted all of the letters four and a half inches. And I stitched one of them in less than 10 minutes. And then on my other machine, I would load a different letter. And then I would start adding the border fabric with my other machine. That's why you all need more than one machine. Because it's so nice to be able to sew while your machine's embroidering. So I'm going to show you how to do these things and also how to make a couple of projects right on the machine with the applique. Anything you can do in the machine as far as building an applique, you could also do in the MySonet embroidery software. But I'm gonna show you first on the machine and then we'll talk about how you can do it in embroidery. All right, so we're gonna switch back over there and I'm gonna turn some of these things off. I'm gonna turn that back image off. So to turn the back image off, you go to where the grid is and you touch and hold, and then just turn the background image off like this. And then I wanna get rid of all of these appliques, so I'm gonna just touch and hold, and now they're all gone. Now, the project that I'm gonna show you how to do is perfect for making Christmas ornaments and all kinds of different things. 
here's a little luggage tag that I made. And this is very, you know, quick, easy thing to do. It probably took me less than 10 minutes to stitch one out. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to design applique. And we're going to select a circle. Now, when you choose a circle, if you make it bigger or smaller, it's going to keep it in proportion. If you want to change it into an oval, then you have to unlock that little padlock. And now it'll let you make it whatever size you want to. But when you're trying to plan a project, sometimes it's a good idea to know how big you want it to be. I wanted this one, let's see if we can get more light on it, to fit in the 120 by 120 hoop. So obviously it's got to be smaller than 120. If that was your limit of your size, and that's exactly the size, you could actually type in here and say, I want this to be, I'm going to make it 115. Okay. And now it's changed that to 115. Now, when I add the stitches to it, it will change the size. I'm going to add a satin stitch. And now you can see the size. It popped right up to that size. And it's kept the height of it, 119. And I'm going to touch the check mark. And now I have a design that fits perfectly in the 120 by 120 hoop. If I want to be able to go in and get another applique, I need to deselect it. Because otherwise, it's going to think I want to go back in and keep working on it. Like when that's selected, this is edited. I can go back in and make changes and say, well, let's see. what Do I like it better with a candle, candle wicking knot? But I am going to leave it a satin stitch. And every time you want to start something brand new, make sure to deselect it so that's not selected on the screen. Now I'm going to go back into my design applique. And I know I'm in design applique because up here I can see it says design applique. This time, instead of a circle, I'm going to choose one of the letters of the alphabet. I'm going to choose a K. And to close down that window, you just go up there. You can slide this bigger or smaller, according to where you want it to be, because the padlock's unlocked. If you want to keep it in proportion, close the padlock. And this time I'm going to make this into a small candle wicking stitch. And I can move it where I think. But even afterwards, I'll be able to move this around. So every time you've gotten a design that you want and you're finished, you touch the check mark and it'll bring you back out. Now, for this one, I decided I just wanted a simple ribbon at the top of it. And because we can bring all of our sewing stitches into embroidery, all I de did was I went up to my sewing stitches, which was a zigzag. I scrolled to find a buttonhole. And this is a sewing buttonhole. And then I didn't touch it to load it. So let me go back and do that again. All right, touch and hold to load it. There it is. Now I want it going the other way, so I'm going to rotate it. And remember, this is all being uh, recorded, right? So afterwards, you can come back and watch it as many times as you want to if you want a, a reminder. Now, I want this centered left and right. And down here, if I look, these are my measurements of whether I have it centered left to right or top to bottom. I want it centered left to right, so I'm going to touch in that box and touch zero, or I could have used these arrow keys to move it too. Now, if you know about buttons and buttonholes, I love buttonholes that are a little denser. So what I like to do is edit it, just like you would in sewing, you can change the density of it and you can change the length of it. So if I touch edit, it will open up and I will get the same kind of screen I would get if I was in sewing. I can make the buttonhole not as long, and if I touch this little toggle switch, that symbol changes, and now I can change the density. Whether you're in sewing or embroidery, this works with all of our machines uh, to change the density on our buttonholes. And even a Topaz 50, you can change the density of your buttonholes. Now, maybe you want a little wider opening so it's easier to cut through the middle. You can also change the width of it, and then you will have a wider opening to be able to cut through the hole. And now when I check OK, uh, the check mark. What did I do here? Let me just change that. Whoops, something goofy happened. I think I have a power surge or something. So let's see. 
Oh, something happened here. We'll have to do something. I'm going to come back over and show you my other example, and then I'll come back and show you my next screen in a second, okay? So let me come back, and I'll just turn that off. And I'm going to come over here to kind of show you. Let's see what's going on here. So the other uh, design that I made... I created, instead of the buttonhole, I brought two appliques in, one for the circle at the top and then another one for the bottom. And when you're creating appliques, if you want it to look nice at the front and the back, it's a good idea to plan out the order of what you're going to do them in. So when I'm starting, I'll have my metal hoop here. All right, here's my metal hoop. And... I set this up a little bit differently. Many of you have the metal um, cap hoop. And sometimes you think that it only gets used for the cap hoop. It's actually got a lot of different uses for it. Sometimes I will use the cat, the hat hoop to be able to just control the fabric better. So I have this random piece of fabric. This is what I'm going to be using for my applique. If I put my magnets on... You can put them right there on the fabric. But for those of you that have the hat hoop, what I like to do is I'll set this up over my fabric. And what this does is puts pressure on the fabric right here, just like it does if you're doing a ball cap. And so once I started doing that, I found that it was, I was using this hat hoop quite a bit more because look at it, it's being held in there, right? And so now I can concentrate on what's happening over on this side. So if you haven't been, uh, if for those of you that have the hat hoop, dig it out if you haven't used it in a while, because this is something you can use all the time when you're working with a metal hoop. And I, I love it. I think it just makes it a little easier. And I especially love it today because it holds my fabric in place. So when you're doing the applique, the very first design, it's going to go straight around and show me where that oval shape is. I don't want to put the backing on yet because I don't want you to see the applique letter on the back. I want the back to look really nice and finished and I only want to see the applique on the front. So what I'm going to do is do the applique letter first. And then uh, there was a question about the number of magnets on a hoop. The very maximum that you should ever use on your hoop is eight. If you're using the hat hoop, it actually uh, really gives you a lot of extra strength on one side or the other. And so I find you can actually get away with using three or four magnets. If In this case, I could put one here too if I wanted to, to hold that fabric. But they do not recommend more than eight magnets on a metal hoop. All right. So when you're thinking about the order of things, it is important to know how you want the back to look. So what I'm going to do is I'll go back over to my machine and we're going to talk about how you can change that. Remember how I said that Who's Smart Viking, our software and our machines, when they create an applique, they do it as one color and the stops are built in. But there's ways of controlling that if you want to change it so that you can combine all of the different stops so that they work in the order that you want them to. Um, and that's one thing we're going to touch on when we do this, okay? So I'm going to go back over. Obviously, I could use the 120 by 120 hoop. And really, it's just a personal choice. But a lot of you love using your metal hoop. And that's I, one of the things I wanted you to think about that. The question is, how do you use a ribbon design with fabric to make an applique? Does the ribbon design make a placement stitch? The <laughs> we I have done some uh, different things using the ribbon embroidery, like the octopus in the back has an applique. If we have enough time, I'm gonna I'll address that. I'll come back and show you how to do that. But basically, if you take any ribbon embroidery design and you change the color of it, it will take away the ribbon embroidery information. So then you can stitch it as an applique and then just come back with the original design and do it with the ribbon if you want to. Okay, I'm going back over to my machine and let us see where we are. Oops. And we're going to 
going to go into embroidery. We'll let our machine calibrate. Now, a lot of you like to make Christmas ornaments. So this is the kind of thing you can also use for Christmas ornaments. I wouldn't necessarily use the buttonhole, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to change the hoop and I'm going to make, I want my ornaments or my luggage tag to be 120 by 120. I find it's easier if I just change the hoop first. Now I'm going to go into my applique screen. I'm going to create a circle. And this time I'm going to make a small little circle that I'm going to use as a hang tag for like um, maybe a Christmas ornament or something like that. And I'm going to add a small satin stitch to it. I can change the size later if I want it smaller. I'm going to touch the check mark. I'm going to deselect and go back into design applique. And this time, I'm going to choose a circle again. I'm going to make it an oval. So remember, if I want to make it an oval, I have to unlock the padlock. And I'm going to make it an oval like this. And I'm going to place it just so that it's right in place. Here you can see I didn't center it. Let's center it by touching zero. So obviously the little circle up there is not centered, but we'll do that afterwards. And now I've chosen my satin stitch, which I kept the same size. Let's touch the other one here. If I want that to be centered, I'm going to look here at that and make sure that says zero. And now they're both centered on top of each other. So the order that they're going to stitch out is a small little circle will stitch out first. The second one will stitch out second, the, uh, the bigger oval there. And then if I wanted to go and add an initial or maybe some other embroidery design, I could definitely do that. Either if I want an applique, I can go back to applique and bring it in. And you can see how quickly this kind of stuff can be done. So we're going to talk about the one that I did. I'm going to make it smaller. And then I'm going to add a small candy looking. And then we're done with that. So when we go up to the thread palette, you're seeing color one, three one is the applique. That's the outline. Three two is going to be the double stitch. And three three is going to be the applique line. When I go to stitch this out, I usually want to stitch this around and then i want to know that that fabric's being held in place so often i will jump and do all the outline the just the the, the first color the first stop at the all at once so that everything is anchored into place so i'm going to touch go i'm going to this is the simplest way to do it i'm going to turn these things all on And I'm going to put my hoop in place. So where I see all the list of my colors, I'm going to stitch the first one. All right. That's the outline. And I'm going to lay this down and just press start. I'm not going to do the whole design, so don't worry. All right. Now, I want this part of the vinyl to be held in place. I don't want it to move on me. So instead of going to the double stitch that's going to go around the circle, I'm now going to go to color number two, color one. All right. And it's the way that it breaks it down. It's color one, color two, or color three. And each one of them is a different design. And now I want to go and do the applique letter. And I'm going to do all of the letter. All right. I'm going to do the first color. Now it stops. And this time it's going to go around twice to applique the fabric in place. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm not going to let it keep going. I'm going to come back over here and just show you the thought process. Okay, so here's one of the ones that I did where I did the letter first. So that way I wouldn't see on the bottom. I wanted this hook to be really nice and stable. So what I did was I stitched out the single stitch and the double stitch around this one. And then I did the same thing for going around the outside applique. And then I trimmed the vinyl from away around the outside edge and also from around the outside loop and also in the center. So even though that this is only a satin stitch, there's vinyl that's inside that. It makes it nice and strong. So it'll hold up really, really well. Once I finished doing the applique letter, that's when I turned it around and I put fabric on the back. I put another layer of my vinyl and then I took a piece of the clear plastic and put it on the back. And then I stitched it out. Before it did the satin stitch, I cut away all of the extra vinyl from the outside edge. All right, I went and I did the straight and double stitch. I cut away all the extra fabric. So my edges look beautiful. They're completely finished. And then the plastic that's on the back, once I was finished doing that, I took my seam ripper and just took the seam ripper and went straight across and opened that up so that I could put my business card in here. Obviously, I trimmed my business card down a little bit because you can see it doesn't quite fit. And so if you're going to use business cards in a luggage tag like this, that's something to think about the size. You might want to make it a little bit bigger, but I like them to be small. I love traveling and having my own luggage tag that I know is just mine. And there's, it's nice to know that you've got your address and everything on the back. But even when you go to sewing classes in the store, think of how many of you have exactly the same luggage. It's really nice to be able to have your own tag that you know belongs to you and put it on both your sewing uh, luggage, your machine luggage, and your embroidery unit luggage. And that way, nobody will ever walk off with your uh, luggage as you're going. So let's see if there's any questions about that. So it's just a fun project. If I'm doing something, and this fabric was very good. The green fabric was a, a, rain, a raincoat type of fabric, but it was very thin. I would put another stabilizer on the back of that because I don't like to see the impression on the back. You can see the impression of the satin stitch. So I would usually put another stabilizer on the back, like a fusible no-show mesh, and that would stiffen this up. I certainly could put polar fleece or something like that also. Okay. So cute ideas. But if you're looking to make Christmas ornaments, keep the idea of this one with the loop because they make your beautiful ornaments. You can make your own ornaments. You could put any design in here. You could put somebody's name. You could make it be something where it's a, a, a gift tag, right? And you could have a nice Christmas design in here, maybe a, a beautiful bird or some pine, anything you're looking for. And then you can put somebody's name on it personally. And it makes a beautiful gift tag. The idea of being able to put a ribbon or to hold it like that makes it so much nicer and usable. But I want my designs to look just as nice on the back as the front. Okay, we have a question. The question is, if you wanted to make that oval ornament double-sided, of course you can. So if you wanted a double-sided ornament and maybe on one side you had a Christmas tree, you could do it twice before you start to... Uh, get ready to stitch it, stitch the back fabric and get that all done. Don't cut it out or anything. If you wanted to use the oval shape, you could put it there to let you know what center it is. And then you, when you get ready, you'll do the, the front of it. And then when it's time to add the back, you just put the back on, make sure it's centered in place. You can tape it with some painter's tape and then it's ready and you've got a double-sided ornament. I think the idea that makes this special is having that little loop that you can put and hang it on a tree and it looks like it's sturdy and nice and strong and it won't break on you after a year. So it kind of makes it a little nicer. Now, uh, the idea of uh, the question also was match up, match up the wrong sides. If when you're doing this, you have the oval shape up 
and you just do the outline of it, don't do the satin stitch, but just do the outline, then when you go to match up the front and the back, it actually works really, really well. And uh, just putting a little bit of painter's tape would work very, very well. Okay. And then there's a, another type of thing for different applique shapes. Sometimes I'm just too lazy to do all that work of cutting everything away. This was a little name tag that I made. And it was a shape of a maple leaf. And I will show you how you can make all different kinds of uh, designs. But what I do if I'm doing multiple name tags like this, I did have a layer of felt, orange felt, and then I put a batik fabric on top because I don't like the way the felt looks on the front. I, it doesn't give it a really nice look. So I put a batik on top and I was looking for a faster, easier way of doing it, but I still wanted it to look nice. So in this case, after the design was all done, I was making multiple name tags of all different names. Then after they were done, I took it out of the hoop. I fused, stick and fuse two on the back of it. And then I ironed a piece of felt onto the back of that and then trimmed it really close to the satin stitch. So it, you can kind of see a little bit of that orange felt that's on the back, but it gives you a really nice rich look without half the effort. So if you're looking maybe for Thanksgiving and you want to make some nice tags, this is a little quicker and easier because you don't have to go and cut out all the layers of the applique and you still get a beautiful look to it. Uh, Meredith asked, does the Brilliance 80 have this capability? I believe it does, but we'd have to check. There is a comparison. I know that the Sapphire 85, the Ruby 90, the original Epic and the Epic 2 does. And I think it does, but we're, um, when, what we'll do is there's a comparison chart. So you can go and look at the Ruby 90 and it will tell you all the features, how it compares to all the different machines. And that's the best way to do it. Okay. And there's, uh, somebody's talking about the monster quilt in the back and I'm actually going to talk about that. So thank you for asking that question. Uh, somebody's working on a small children's quilt using the monsters and there is stops that are in there, but make sure I, I did them and there was stops that stopped. So I'm wondering if that design did not have color stops, but it used the same color like yellow, orange or orange three times. And when you're using designs, if you're not sure, if you can see that, I'll pull up that monster design because I want to show you how you can go in there. See these monsters right here. They were cut. So let's go and look at that monster design and see how it's made. Okay, I'm going to come back to the screen. The quickest way to find applique designs that are built into your machine is to go up to the Joy OS Advisor, for those of you that have the newer machines, and go to applique embroidery. I'm going to go to cover edge applique. And I'm going to take my hoop off here. And... Let's look at a monster. All right. Now, down below, it gives you the instructions on how to do it. But let's look at the way the colors are. So color number one is the orange for the ears. Color number two, and I'm going to put on color number two, is the other ear. Color three is the hands. And it's going to finish off there. Let's go down to color number one seven and one eight. So see, when they made this design, they broke the rule. Instead of using all one color and having the color stops in between, they've used the same color, two, three, eight, one, for the first part of it and also for the satin stitch. So it would be important when you go into embroidery not to choose color sort and color merge because it would take those two colors and put them together. And that's, it's really valuable to look at the way a design is made. And if you don't have a machine like the Epic or Ruby 90, bring it into the software and look at the way the colors are and what every color does. Now, here's gonna be, um, oh, wait a second, my cloud's off here. Now, I'm not signed into my machine. I'm just gonna go in and sign in so my cloud will work here. Just don't look at my 
Uh, wait a second here. I want to. I'll show you how this works in a second here. All right. At, now you all know my email. I should just hide it for a second. It's not a good idea to show everybody your password. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it to my machine. Now let's see if I can get signed in there. It would be, let's see, hold on. If I can't do it quickly, then I'll get out of it. Yes. Oh, that's what it is. Hold on. I see I made a spelling mistake. And thank you for your patience. All right, let's try that. There we go. So I've signed in. Now, once I signed in, when my machine turned off, it went off. So now what I'm going to do is you see the little airplane there. I'm going to send that design to my machine and I can choose my computer and then it will send that design to my machine. Because I want to show you what I'm going to do with it. Let's hope it doesn't prove me a liar here. All righty. So there is my computer. Right now I'm on my computer. So when I look at these colors, if you have a machine that you can't do that, looking at the colors right on the machine, then go to your computer and pull it up in the software. And even the free software you can do this with, right? You can hold your mouse over it and it will show you which color. Now, if I was to go and export this and choose color sort, it's going to combine those together. So that's why I always like to not have it be represented by the same color. Now, I'm doing this design in my quilt that I have, and I wanted to cut this design in half. So what I did was, and for this, you need the gold version or the platinum version to cut your designs apart. I'm just going to make it really easy. I'm just going to go in here and I want to cut the lower part of this monster away. And I'll show you why in a minute. Okay. There it is. And it's gone. I got a straight little stitch right here that I can move and move up here. And now I have just deleted that whole part. Now, when you're looking at the quilt that you're seeing here, you notice that I, these were just six and a half inch strips. So I didn't want to waste the thread and the time to stitch out the whole monster because I didn't want him to be there. So what I did was I just cut it off onto his mouth and then I sent that design back to my machine. So I'm working. All right, there's my monster. I'm going to go up to the cloud, my Sonat cloud, and I'm going to send it back to my machine. And now the new design will show up on my screen. It says, do you want to accept it? All right. And now I'm going to get rid of this one here. Whoops. I got rid of the wrong one. Darn it. Excuse me. Let me go back and do it again. It's always good to know which one you have selected. All righty. There it is. All right. So, you can see here now, when I go and look at this, you'll notice that color, it got color sorted because when I exported it or sent it to the machine, I had color sort selected. And so what it did is it merged those two colors. So I'm always very aware of how the applique is created when it's being done in your machine. Even designs that are in the MySonet library the older ones were not done like that. The older ones did not have a separate color stop. And so it's always a good idea to know when you're doing the applique, which color it is and how it's saved. 99% of the designs that are made with the MySonet embroidery, uh, the Premier Plus 2, any of the designs that we've done in the, in the last large amount of time, they all have the stops that are built right into them. Any designs you buy from outside of the company, they do not. They don't have the ability to do that with their machines or recognize those stops. And so they tend to put color changes in there. This design is unique and unusual 
uh, for the person who asked this question is because they did not do it with the traditional way we do it. And the reason that you had a problem was because you probably touched color sort and color merge and it put those one, the two colors and merged them into one. So next time, just try not to choose that and it will stop for you. And, but that's a very good question, right? And I'm so glad you brought that up because it, it's really something we should all be aware of when we don't know uh, how a design is made and we're not really sure an applique that we're doing how the first time we do it, I always check it out. Now, I just want to give you another couple of ideas. My time is running short. An applique does not have to be, I'm always putting things upside down. An applique does not have to be cutting away the fabric from the outside. It could be that you cut away fabric uh, from the uh, from the inside. Like in this case, you could lay this uh, fabric. This is like a silk cotton blend. You could lay it on top or you could do the opposite. You could take the border fabric, have this original was stitched on a uh, original fabric and then decide well, you know what? I want to add a border to it. Let's do it right in the machine. I could take that same oval applique design that I did and stitch out to show me where it's going to be. And then I can lay my fabric down. When I do the double stitch around, then I can stop and cut the fabric away from the center. And it will look, make it look like you've got a fancy border on there, but with no work. So I, I've done that a few times. I know many of you have seen the quilts that I've done, but just to kind of show you, all right, that's that's the way these borders were made. I took a frame and I had the design done. And then the last thing I did was lay the border fabric down and it stitched around. After I did the double stitch, I cut away from the center. There is, if you're interested in the software to make your own applique designs, a couple of different quilts that I've done. These were all made, this was made all from the create tab in our software. So if you have the platinum version, you have the create tab. This is my one of my favorite quilts that I've made. And you can do this with any quilt design. Look at these shapes. These are just standard shapes that you can find in the quick create. The instructions on how to do this, you'll find there's a link for it. And I'm just going to show you two seconds. Okay. I'm going to go to create. I'm going to get in here. Let me get rid of this guy. I'm going to go to digitizing in my Sonet Platinum. And it opened up a new screen. I can use the wizard, but I'm not going to use the wizard. I'm going to go to quick create. Let's look at all the shapes that are in here. There are so many fabulous shapes. So whether you have the box version, a platinum or the uh, subscription, it all works exactly the same. And when you're looking at all the different shapes that you have here, look at these beautiful, beautiful designs. This is the kind of stuff where it's super easy. You just you tell it what you want. I don't want a pattern fill, so I'm going to deselect it. I do want a satin line and I want an applique. And so now when I touch the word shape, it will bring me in that design and I can change the size of it. If I want to, I can change the fill stitch. Maybe I don't want that fill stitch to be a satin stitch. I can right click and then I can say, instead of a satin line, I want a triple stitch or a motif line. And it's really quick. And this is great practice on how to learn how to use the software. So if I go to Husqvarna Viking and I go to the quilting stitches, let me go to the applique stitches. One of these is my blanket stitch. And I'm gonna move this aside so you can see it. If I touch apply, it will change it. All right, let me just touch okay. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. There's my blanket stitch. And I can go and adjust it and change it. Like I don't, the way it, the way it looks right here, I can change the shape of it. I can edit the points. So that if I don't like the way this corner is going, that I can change the way these points are and totally change how something looks. All right. And it really does give you the ability to create your own applique shapes. So 
when it comes to quilts like this, look at the individual shapes that you have there. Just super easy ones to work with. And uh, even in this one here, the instructions for doing this, it's the same type of shapes. And this is just such great practice for making your own appliques. So you don't have to use appliques that somebody else has done. If you see a quilt applique quilt pattern that you like and think would turn into a really nice embroidery, then this is a perfect place to practice it because the quick create, you can, you can almost always find a shape that's very close to what you're working with. And then you change where the nodes are and you can make that shape look exactly what you want it to look like. We're almost out of time. Only, where does the time go? I don't know. Uh, but I'll come back just for one more second. All right. I'm going to go back to quick create and I'm going to zoom back out there and let's go to a different shape because there's a lot of flower shapes that are in here too. So here's the flower that I wanna do. I wanna turn it into an applique. I touch the shape, there it is. I can make it be as big as I want it to be. Now I can add a new color, let's make it yellow. And I'm gonna to need to move it. There it is, it's down at the bottom. And I'm gonna go this time and I'm gonna get a circle. Now the way these are made, they have the stops built into one color. You'll notice that the blue has only one color. And I'm going to get rid of that one. I don't want that one there anymore. So now I've got the flower. I'm going to go and add the circle to it. And I'm going to make it smaller. I can change the fabric if I want to, but this isn't a computer class. I just want to give you the idea of how easy this is to do. Now, for those of you that don't believe me, that there are three layers in here. If I go to home, oh, if I go to edit, I can break that apart. And then over here on the left, you will see, I'll go into the colors. There's a, for the uh, center circle, there's a running stitch and a stop. There's an applique piece. If you have an electronic quilt or a cutter, you can send it there. And then there's a double stitch. And then that stop is what's forcing your machine to stop in between colors. And then there's a satin line. So that's the way most embroidery designs are made with our Husqvarna Viking machines and with most of the designs that are built into the library. There are a few exceptions as that monster one, you discovered that that was an exception, but it's always good to pay attention to how a design is made before you start um, stitching it out, okay? And um, I think we're just about out of time. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, there's just like a million different ways that you can make your own applique designs to make your own three-dimensional projects and to change the designs that we have into embroidery uh, applique designs that weren't before that. Next, uh, two weeks from now, I'm, I'm lucky I get to do Husqvarna Viking Facebook Live two times in a row. So the next Facebook Live that we're going to do is all about taking your ready-made garments and things you can get at a thrift shop and turning them into works of art. I love this design. This poppy is a cutwork embroidery, and I've got it done here. I have it in the back. It's one of my very favorite designs, and uh, I've got lots of creative projects of things that I've purchased garments because it just wasn't worth making them sometimes and then embroidering them. So it makes it look like a garment that's maybe worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So uh, don't forget if you're interested, you can um, let it, let uh, go to the Who's Friend of Viking website and tell it you're interested. And then you'll get a reminder. I think it's like an hour before or something like that, but we're going to have a lot of fun talking about how you can change your garments. I've got some dress pants. I've got all kinds of fun things to work on. So thank you all for joining me. I'm going to say goodbye and uh, I will look at the comments afterwards. And if there's any questions that I haven't answered, I'll go back and put some more detailed answers in there. So uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye everybody.